Certainly in the last week, uh, we've had that Māori Party issue, which is ongoing. But we also, of course, had Kelvin Davis talking uh, to Karen Chaw, the ACT MP in Parliament, under questioning about Oranga Tamariki, and basically slurring her by saying she wasn't Māori enough to be asking questions about those issues and she should cross, cross the bridge into Māoridom and stop looking at things through a vanilla lens. I was heartened and I praised um, Kelvin Davis for apologising for those hurtful and ill-considered comments. And Karen uh, Chaw had the good grace, uh, the humanity and the maturity to accept Kelvin Davies' apology. But does that mean it's over? Well, maybe not. Because this issue of not being Māori enough is a, a trope that is perpetuated in our political system and in our cultural discourse. And one person who has fallen foul of it and thinks that we need to address it is a person, uh, Māori or not, who is hugely successful in an in international space. He runs a company that provides some of the most advanced and engaging computer graphics for sports uh, anywhere in the world, and some would say the best in the world. Um, it started in Dunedin as a small thing. It is now a big international thing. Her name, his name is Sir Ian Taylor, and Sir Ian joins us on the phone now. Ian, nice to have you back on, on the platform. How's it going? Good, thanks. Yeah, good. Hey, just listening to you, Lee, and it's one of the reasons I've stopped talking to old people. Um, you know, the, the kind of divisions and things that I see. So, okay, I'm in Timaru today. I'm about to speak to probably my, I don't know, from the whole pile of school teachers, because <clears throat> we have focused our attention now on our primary and intermediate kids. We've placed, we've built a whole website called Matauranga, which celebrates the innovation that was brought to us by our Pacific Voyages, and I am seeing the most stunning responses from kids to five to ten years old. So my face is in our young kids. And not yeah, the old ones. yeah, good on you, because we do, we are kind of stuck, in, aren't we, in having an argument of banging our heads together and being negative about each other. It is... Uh, amongst a generation, I guess that's the way we roll, and it seems incredibly counterproductive. Yeah, I, I think it is, and you know, I, I agree with you. Um, you know, I, I congratulate Kelvin on on apologising, but it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Um, it's the sort of things, you know, and I've kind of run into the, the battle battle with uh, Willie Jackson, uh, you know, as well. So there's, there there is a there is a. I mean, I like to think it's sort of an elitist group that has decided what Māori is. And I'm Māori, you know, I don't have the real, I, I, I am learning it, um, but that doesn't take away from my Māoriness. You know, I, I look back to the little place, Ropunga, I was brought up in with my aunties, um, you know, and I remember that, those, you know, the stories they shared with me, stories I didn't get at school, I have to say, which is why we've developed this platform. <clears throat> but... You know, I, I agree with um, Dr. Danny O'Regan, really. We, we talk quite a lot about this. And, you know, a lot of the stuff that is now being um, touted from different, different places ignores the fact that there were Pākehā that did amazing things as well in that history of ours for Māori. Yeah, Ian, and of course I've watched you. You were one of my TV heroes when I was a young, young kid. I've watched your career. You are never someone who it seems to me who has, and, and don't take offence, overemphasized your Māoriness. You seem to have and you seem to, to live and stand by simply who you are as a person. Uh, you do not deny that you are Māori, but it is your achievements and the way you walk rather than, I don't know, the colour of your skin or your ethnic background that defines you as a person. Um, I'm not sure that, that that's the case. I do wear it. I do it wear it with pride, and I wear it with greater pride now. Um, it, it's interesting because um, you know, as I look back at the history, I've been in business for 32 years, and for almost 28, 29 of those years, when people ask me how was it that I do all this amazing technology stuff around the world, I used to say, and I actually meant it. I just surrounded myself with really clever white people. Um, I then one day went to a lecture by Professor Lisa Matasso-Smith, a Canadian, um, she's, she's now in New Zealand, but who had done 
um, research on the full um, map of human migration using DNA from the first steps out of Africa to the last steps here in Aotearoa and down to the Chatham Islands. And her finding was that one of the greatest, the story of Polynesian voyaging across the Pacific Ocean was inarguably in her books, the greatest story of migration in human history. And as I looked into that, I started to realize the story that hadn't been taught. We ask ourselves why our Pacifica and Maori um, struggle with the subjects of science, technology, engineering, and math. It's because this story was never shared with them. That's what this platform is in the schools. That's what I'm talking about today. And I do wear that, that yeah, entire okay. um, maori -ness. And let me, let me also say that, you know, one of the things that I look at, that, that amazing business that you talk about, you know, that's done all the stuff around the world, um, I look back at it now and I know why it has been successful. It is the bringing together of the two cultures, the yeah. really clever white people. And what I didn't know I had, I do know I have now, and I am incredibly proud of it. Mm. Look, you've written, recently written artic an article and made some comments, not so much about Kelvin Davis, and, and also I commend you for accepting and acknowledging his apology, which I think in a grown-up world is how we move on and, and continue debates. If we make a mistake, we say sorry. The person we apologise to says thank you for the apology. You continue some sort of discourse as a result. But you've been particularly critical of Willie Jackson, who, when Kelvin Davies made those comments in Parliament, was sitting behind him kind of cackling. You tell us he that... He was. You, yeah. You he tell was. He was. And you tell us that personally you have run into this issue uh, previously uh, with Willie Jackson. Willie is currently in the middle of bringing two groups together, Radio New Zealand and Television N New Zealand, do you think, and they're a big, that will be a big media broadcasting and, if you like, part of our social fabric in New Zealand in a country of five million people. Do you think Willie Jackson has got the spirit of cooperation and togetherness that we're talking about here this morning or not? I mean, all, well, you know, I have to say I don't think so. I mean, all, all you have to do is go back to last week and see the way he handled those questions that were placed in Parliament. I mean, just off the cuff, bluster, it was competitive, it was competitive, and, you know, he's always backing off stupid things he says like nobody trusts the media. I mean, that was just outrageous coming from the Minister of Broadcasting and Media who's pulling together these two, you know, and, and I'm not sure the debate um, has, you know, been properly had there. You know, I just can I I just want to mention something with reference to you though. <laughs> oh good lord. <laughs> I'm um, in trouble. Yeah, you hear yeah, yeah, no, 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 you're not actually. There is a there is a Polynesian um concept called Tolanoa. Now Tolanoa is this wonderful concept that no matter what your views are, when you come together, you speak and listen with respect. Mm. And this applied to something you said the other day, which you got into a lot of trouble about about terrorists. Mm. Um, you know, the terrorist. And I remember hearing it on the news. I thought, Sean, what are you talking about? And then I went back and I listened to it in context because Talanoa, you speak and listen with respect. And, you know, you had a really, really valid point. One of the things that concerned me on September the 11th when those buildings came down, you know, you, I had this thing that. There goes a lot, of, there will, this will be a reason for a lot of our freedoms to be taken away. And one of the things that really concerned me was suddenly there was this term terrorist arose. And my question even back then was, who decides what a terrorist is? And it is one of the most dangerous words that there is. So, you know, when I, when I heard the news story, I thought, gosh, sure, what are you going on about? But then I listened to what you were saying in the spirit of Tolanoa and realise that actually this is a discussion we should have and it's a really important discussion because I couldn't help thinking back in those days when I marched against the Springbok tour in the Vietnam War, how easy would it have been the government to say, actually, that's terrorism? You get it, Ian. And to be honest, I haven't felt the need... Um in some ways, because I know so many people have gone back and listened and I've had a lot of feedback from people who have got the difficult conversation I think we need to have about this because I think the word terrorist creates a fear and I think fear is the worst motivator 
for making decisions collectively or individually in any context. Um, yeah, and yeah. you know that which, which which brings me to this wonderful way we were meant to have with this we had handled COVID. We handled COVID with fear, and it was absolutely the wrong thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Ian, thank you very, very much for that. To be honest, I'm, I'm a little stunned by it because it has been a rugged week in some time, in some ways, and not least so for the people who work with me and around me at the platform who have had to got, get used to the level of hatred that can be directed uh, upon you, and in one case, most certainly by a mainstream media organisation. I want to get back to Willie Jackson. I want to get back to Willie Jackson being the Minister of Broadcasting. Um... And clearly what you have, the concerns you have about his attitudes and his appropriateness. Do you also have concerns about, and you've been in broadcasting an awfully long time or associated with an awfully long time. We've highlighted a programme called F-Boy Island, which Television New Zealand is making. And yes, the F does stand for the F word, which is a piece of reality television that um, Television New Zealand is spending money on where three young women have to decide whether a group of young men, about 20 of them, are just guys interested in having sex or are seriously nice guys. One of the contestants in this competition actually has been in court charged with suffocating a woman he was having sex with to stop her screaming uh, for help. Television New Zealand intends, having edited that guy out of the programme, to proceed making that piece of television. Um, putting aside Māori, Pākehā issues, race issues, do you think that's what a publicly owned broadcaster should be doing? Uh, I mean, don't get me started on reality TV. I mean, this is the, um, what you're talking about. I, I'd seen some headline, headlines to sort of touching with it. Um, I don't know the detail because I honestly look at a lot of the stuff and if that's the description of what this is... It is. Um, I'm, you know, I'm, I, I'm just flabbergasted, absolutely flabbergasted. It, it's, it's, I have no words to describe mm. where somebody might have said, hey, this is a really good idea, let's put it on television. Mm. Mm. It's just bizarre. Yeah. Well, Ian, I don't think I'm going to accuse you of being a plastic Māori. Let's look for a constructive way, way forward on this. What change or what engagement would you like to see from Willie Jackson to give you more confidence in him to feel that he was taking part in this important debate about how we keep bringing this country together. And I'm not someone who's going to say we're, we're divisive and we're divided. I actually think if we, we sit back and take an objective look, we're a pretty good country. Um, what change would you like to see in Willie? Uh, I, mean, I, I, I mean, it's really funny, isn't it? You know, everybody says that's Willie being Willie. And... And I don't know that you can change that. The real problem is that it didn't matter when he was just a radio jock. Willie could be Willie. But mm. now he's got one of the most powerful jobs in the country in a majority government. Mm. And Willie being Willie is just not good enough. I mean, <clears throat> one, the thing I brought up with Willie was that at a meeting, when I, at one of my first meetings at Māori Television, he was a guest. And it, it, part of his thing back to me was that I didn't have the real, so I had no right to be speaking. And wow. I remember being furious about it. Wow. And he has denied, he has denied he said that. <clears throat> but let me, you know, and actually his, his idea of governance is such that in the paper, his response in the paper was a sort of bluster of all sorts of challenges threatening. But he also named Dr. Jim Mather as supporting his argument. Jim is the chair of Radio New Zealand. Yeah. At, the time, this discussion, so even in that kind of sense of governance, governance, Willie doesn't seem to see anything wrong with that. But just to put my thing in context, and this includes the Prime Minister now, in a hui in Hastings a few years back, um, and, and uh, you know, the Prime Minister was there, and these are the days when we really got on, you know, I, I was a great admirer. Of it. And so in a light-hearted manner as I was leading into her speaking, Willie was there, and I mentioned that the time Willie had said to me that I didn't have the real, so I didn't deserve to be on Māori television, the Māori television board. When she got up afterwards, she laughed and said, yeah, that's Willie being Willie. Willie didn't find it funny. Willie took me aside later and said, when are you going to get over that? It was a joke. So 
you know, he acknowledged back then that he had said it. This week, he's denied that he said it, and he's got all this, this evidence that, that apparently he has that, that yeah. he didn't say. But he did say it, and my response to it was that, Willie, that's casual racism of the opposite kind. Kind. Ah, now, I, two other things I want to cover off with you. We've you been said we're only going to be 10 minutes. Oh, yeah, but Ian, I so <laughs> like talking to you. And to be honest, from the text flowing and people so love listening to you as well, my friend. Um, two things, talking about casual or reverse racism, the Māori Party currently has on its website uh, a, yes, sta <laughs> a statement that says it's a well-known fact that Māori are genetically stronger. Ming Foon came on this programme and said that's racist, they should take it down. They haven't. What do you think of that? <laughs> I know. Well, you know, I, I think I think that, um, I mean, I thought it was funny, but I think that, you know, if the race conciliator says that, it should be down. Yeah. I mean, I think it, I actually think it's got a lighthearted... Yeah, yeah. and, and I've got to say, I, I, my best, my most serious. generous interpretation is they are having a, a they're, poking, they're poking the yeah. borax, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think, and I think that's kind of weird, you know, these things escalate. Yeah. to places that, that are just crazy. Yeah. So, you know, you know, I'd like to think, yeah, actually, I'm going to be strutting All right, and to be <laughs> honest, I'm not going to die in a ditch if they don't. No. Um, but, no. you know, I've got to beat a drum and do my job as well. The other thing is, and we're you know, about... Could I... Yeah? Could I... There's something else I'd say, you know, um, about Willie Jackson. So Willie was chair of the Māori Language Commission at the time, you know, so that his job was to... Now, I remember one of the things on Māori television was that the whole drive was, um, um, Jim Mather, actually, his goal was, let's make sure that we do something that makes at least the real kind of a daily usage thing. Yeah. And what I would say to Willie is, you had that, you were in charge of the, Māori, the language commission for so long, who shifted this debate fastest? Probably Air New Zealand. You know, yeah, the use yeah. of the video on in New Zealand yeah. has bordered into that. And then Guy on Espana, you know, what, yeah. what they've done. And yes, he kept cops flat. But why isn't, you know, I've never heard Willie acknowledge, and actually, if he was in charge at the time, Christopher Luxon. Um, I've <laughs> never heard Willie acknowledge the work that the rail that had been bought to in New Zealand in daily travel. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Look, I want to get back to the final thing, Ian, I promise, and then I'll let, let you get back um, to the important work you're doing. We're about to uh, interview an international journalist on a speech that the Prime Minister gave at the UN recently in which she described internet or speech on the internet as a weapon of war. To justify it would seem a growing move to regulate and monitor what people say across internet by way of communication. And we come back to our discussion about Christchurch and the terrible events there. It would seem to me that we have a Prime Minister who believes that common people using modern technology to speak their minds freely is somehow an act of war. Does that concern you? Um, yeah, act of war is, you know... Well, those are the words she used. Really she said, really said the internet really is massive, used... Yeah. Fairly massive statement. Um, you know, one of the things, there's kind of these unintended consequences. I, I talk about it today, you know, I have a video that was uh, an ad that was made in 1954 and it was about this wonderful new in invention called plastic. And <laughs> I follow it up with a picture of an island the size of Mexico that is made of plastic. Yeah. Um, you know, we have the news that 76% that of all the fish caught around New Zealand now carry plastic. Mm. And that's in one generation. So in those unintended consequences, I remember the arrival of the internet, um, 1990, the day, year we started our company, actually. Yeah. And this was the thing that was going to change everything. And it was so positive. This was where we would talk. This is where we would communicate. Mm. One of the unintended consequences is that anybody could talk on it. And mm. I think that that's where it, it is dangerous. There are dangerous things happening there. I'm not sure how we deal to it. But as I watch some of the, you know, the, the, the theories, it's, it's really just hard to speak in the spirit of Tom and I with respect and listen with respect when you read some of the stuff that is really dividing our country. And I think, or, or the world, and as you look around the world, that huge division is happening because of the freedoms that the internet actually gave us. It had the potential for something 
amazing to happen. And in a lot of places, it has. It is, yeah. But it also comes with, again, the unintended consequences. Which brings me back, if I could close yeah. with a Māori whakatauki, ko ngā tahuao tapawai nanahi, hei to ira ora mua apopo. Which means the footsteps we lay down in our path create the paving stones of where we stand today. Those footsteps are always in front of us. And I think that um, if we took that whakatauki and kept an eye on all of those footsteps that we have laid down that bring us to where we are, we may be able to have that other Pacifica notion of calendar where we discuss these things with respect. Uh, it is uh, a great word. I'm going to integrate it into the philosophy of the platform. Ian, it is always a, a great pleasure talking to you. We have a fantastic day. We will catch up again uh, soon. That is Sir Ian Taylor. What a fascinating start to the show.